So uh, welcome everybody again. Uh, the second uh, talk of this uh, session is Batch OT with Optimal Rate by Svika Brakerski, Pedro Branco, Nico Dotling, and uh, Sihang Pu. And Sihang is going to give a talk. Your, your mic is off. Your mic is off. Should I say now? Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry for that. Um, Thanks for introduction again. Uh, I'm Si Hong. Uh, I will talk about uh, batch OT with optimal rate. It's a uh, joint work with uh, Zvika Brakeski, Pedro Branco, and Nico Dretlin. So let me first uh, recall the functionality of a BBS transfer. There are two parties, a sender and a receiver. So a sender inputs two bits, uh, M0 and M1, while the receiver inputs a single choice bit and the functionality will output the chosen bit MB to the receiver. So for security, we require that uh, the sender doesn't want the receiver to learn uh, the other unchosen message M1 minus B. Similarly, the receiver doesn't want the sender to learn which message is chosen by him. So there's, uh, there's an amortized variant of OT called a uh, batch OT. Basically, it's an uh, independent bit OT where sender inputs an uh, n pair of bits and receiver inputs uh, n choice bits to retrieve uh, mb1 to mbn. So in this work, um, we focus on the two-round batch OT protocol, which means uh, each party in the protocol only sends a single message, where the receiver sends the first message encoding his choice bits, and the sender responds with a second message encoding the chosen bits. Uh, the two notions uh, we, are interested, we are interested in this work is uh, our upload rate and download rate. Upload rate means uh, it's a ratio between the, the choice bits and the first message. Download rate is a ratio between the uh, chosen bits and the second message. So it's natural to ask, uh, can we build a batch OT protocol with optimal rate? Here, optimal rate means uh, both upload rate and download rate are close to one. In other words, uh, the total communication complexity tends to be uh, two times n, where n is the number of bits you transfer. So it's straight, it's uh, it's uh, the straightforward solution is to use um, rate one FHE. Uh, rate one FHE uh, makes uh, uh, it says uh, for an uh, n-bit suffer test, your, uh, it also con contains uh, or convey uh, roughly n-bit message. But there are a few drawbacks. Uh, the first is it requires lattice assumption. Second, it's, um, it's not computationally efficient due to the bootstrapping mechanism used. So we tend to ask, can we build uh, that rate one batch OT with assumptions not implying FHE or without lattice assumptions? So the answer leads to our main result. Uh, we are able to build a batch OT protocol with over rate one, which secure against uh, semi-honest adversaries. And we need a DDH assumption to argue sender security, and we need a DDH plus LPN assumptions to argue receiver security. As an additional result, uh, we show how to emulate a small subgroup in ZP, which gives us uh, the first uh, statistically function private linear homomorphic encryption under DDH with rate one server test. Here's a roadmap. Of this talk, uh, I will first show you how to build a standard OT from Alcoma encryption schemes. Then I show how to achieve download rate one via uh, server test compression. Next, I will show how to achieve upload rate one via re-encryption technique. At the end, I will briefly describe how to uh, tackle two small issues appearing in the last step. Okay, um, as a warm up. 
let's see how we can build a standard bit OT from uh, from Algama scheme. Uh, the, the receiver generates a public key, namely a generator, a generator G and a group element G to the Y, where Y is also the secret key. To generate the server test, uh, the receiver encodes his choice bit B as G to the B. Note this, uh, this encoding can be decoded efficiently due to uh, the small, small message space. The receiver sends a public key and a server test to the sender. The sender will morphically compute the OT function on this server test. This OT function is linear. Uh, you can see uh, if x equals to zero, uh, the output would be m0. If x equals to one, the output would be m1. So after the evaluation, the server test will encrypt the g to the mb. And uh, of course, with a refreshed randomness. And then uh, the sender sends back the server test to the receiver. The receiver can decrypt it, can, can decrypt it by his uh, secret key to learn the chosen bit. Um, considering the communication bandwidth, the download rate is uh, one over two times uh, group size, as there are two group elements in the second message. And upload rate similarly is one over four times group size, as there are four group elements, group elements in the first message. So this basic protocol is not satisfying as it has poor rates. So how can we um, improve on that? Um, we use a subtest compression technique to, to achieve a download rate one. Uh, and that is uh, to encrypt L bits. Uh, our public key is gonna be L plus one group elements. And uh, the uncompressed subtest also contains L plus one group elements and they, they share the same randomness. After compression, uh, the server test is composed of a header and L payload bits. The header contains C0 and a key. Uh, the header, uh, the size of the header only depends on the security parameter. So in this way, we can compress the server test into L bits plus some constant. This um, is a symptotic uh, read one server test. So with this technique, we can amortize the sender's message as follows. Uh, the receiver encodes uh, his uh, choice bit for each choice bit encoded as a vector. So he has a uh, L choice bits. So they're gonna be L server tests of uh, vectors. And the receiver sends a public key and a L server tests to the sender. The sender also homomorphically compute the OT function on each server test. Note for each server test, he runs the same function on each coordinate of the vector. So after evaluation, uh, the server test will encrypt the, the chosen bit at its uh, specific position. After summing up, and uh, the sender can compress it to uh, a small or a short server test using the server test compression technique. After receiving it, uh, the receiver can decrypt it to get the, to learn the chosen bits. So in this way, uh, the download rate is beca becomes uh, L over L plus some constant, as long as uh, we transfer, as long as the number of bits to transfer is large enough. So this, this rate is close to one. However, in, in the other side, the upload rate is even worse because um, we use L square group elements to encode just uh, L bits. So how to improve on the upload rate? Uh, our approach is to use read encryption technique. Uh, what we need actually is a read one encryption scheme with linear decryption. So uh, LPN almost fulfills these requirements. Uh, we call LPN means uh, for any uniformly random matrix and a random vector and um, an error vector with small Hamming weight. Uh, LPN holds if AS plus E is computationally indistinguishable from a uniformly random vector. And uh, symmetric encryption also similarly works as follows. Uh, given a secret key S, uh, we can encrypt a binary vector M as a compute AS plus E and plus M. To decrypt it, just, uh, just compute D minus AS. So for the moment, we, 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 we will ignore this uh, decryption error. So with LPN, 
the receiver can encrypt his uh, can encrypt his uh, trust bits uh, under the LPN scheme, and additionally he will encrypt the LPN secret under the Alchemy scheme. So then the receiver sends the Alchemy public key and Alchemy subtest, and also the LPN subtest and the matrix A to the sender. The sender will first homomorphically decrypt this uh, LPN subtest under the hood of Alchemy. So he will, he will get a stubborn test encrypting the receiver's choice bits. And then he can homomorphically evaluate the OT function and compress it to the small stubborn test as before. The receiver then just uh, decrypted to learn the chosen bits. By doing this way, the upload rate is uh, L over N times uh, polylamina plus, plus L. This uh, also close to one, as long as the uh, dimension of the LPN secret is much smaller than the number of samples L. Also notice that we ignore the, the matrix A in calculation because uh, we can reuse this matrix for multiple bunch of uh, choice bits. And um, but there are still two small issues. Um, the first one is uh, LPN has decryption errors. So it will produce uh, incorrect outputs. Second, uh, Alchema is actually not a function private uh, scheme over Z2, but uh, in this step, we need to homomorphically decrypt LPN server tests. We actually need to operate in Z2. So let's see uh, how to deal with LPN errors. Uh, we need to run additional protocols in parallel. Let's first consider the positions uh, with error, which means uh, the choice bits at these positions will be flipped after LPN decryption. Since the receiver knows the error positions, so for each error position, he can compute the, the first message of an additional OT protocol with the choice bit BI as its input. He computes uh, another compute the, uh, the first message of PRL protocol and with a uh, position I as input. Then he sends uh, both of these messages for each error position to the sender. After receiving them, the sender also for each error position computes the OT response uh, based on these messages uh, for all of his inputs. So in this way, the, the sender will get a database of OT responses for each uh, for each error position. Then the sender just uh, computes the PRL response based on each database for each error position. Then he sends the responses to the receiver. The receiver can locally recover the chosen bits at this at, at uh, error positions by finishing the PIR protocol followed by the uh, OT protocol. Okay, uh, but what about the, the bits as the positions without errors? Um, we cannot just di directly send them to the receiver because the sender doesn't know which positions uh, has error and which are not. So the sender needs to use uh, an additional technique called a distributed punctual PRF. So the sender holds a, a PRF key and uh, and mask all of his inputs as the uh, PRF values. And uh, the sender then uh, obliviously generate and transfer the puncture key to the receiver. With this puncture key, the receiver can uh, unmask uh, PRF values at all positions except for the error positions. This can be constructed by known techniques. So uh, the last issue uh, is about the function privacy. So sender privacy actually doesn't hold in above protocols because Alchemy is not a function private over the two. The reason is uh, the group ZP doesn't have uh, non-trivial subgroups. So if we encode the, the bit in as a G to the B, it will leak information as we cannot do modular reduction. However, if we want to encode it in higher order bits, like in lattice setting, it is still accumulated errors, uh, which leaks information again. So our solution is to use a uh, random master warning. 
with randomized warning, we still want to encode the bit uh, in high order bits. But uh, now this, this time we uh, we want to uh, integer close to uh, zero or Q number two according to a discrete Gaussian distribution. In this way, we can solve the problem and it actually gives us a statistical function private schemes. Yeah, and there are a few open questions uh, to be solved in future works. Uh, for example, uh, can we upgrade our same honest security to malicious security? Or um, can we remove or replace PN's assumptions with others? Thanks for listening. Thank you. Yeah. Um, do anybody has questions? Uh, Hi, thank you for the talk. Very nice uh, tricks. I was wondering what kind of uh, error rates do you use in uh, the LPN assumption? Okay, uh, um, yeah, uh, thanks for the question. Uh, the, the error rate is uh, slightly uh, sublinear to the, to the number of samples. It's uh, uh, one is inverse small polynomial error rate. Okay, thank yeah, you. No problem. Are there any other questions? Um, can I ask you if you could go back to slide, I think 12. Uh, to which slide? Huh? 12. 12. Oh, yeah, it's about here. Okay. So, um, so this is uh, LPN. Uh, and at the same time, Elgamal, right? Yes. So where, where is Elgamal? What are you applying Elgamal to? Uh, sorry. Uh, what, what is I... Elgamal encrypted? Which part uh, of okay. this? Okay. The Elgamal encryption encrypted the uh, LPN secret. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the server, the sender, sender applies Elgamal re-encryption? Uh, yeah, yeah the, the sender applies, uh, the sender homomorphically decrypts the LPN under the Elgamal schemes. Since Elgamal is linear homomorphic. Ah, also oh, ser server evaluates the, the it, it evaluates the decryption algorithm over uh, the, over the algorithm scheme. Yes, over algorithm subtest. Ah, and that's what it sends back. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. And um, so this packing, it's uh, you use the packing technique, right? Yes. So. It, it has no limit, like I can pack however many bits I want into the single Elgamal uh, object, group element, or, or it stops uh, at some point. You, you, you're seeing how many uh, bits we can pack in the uh, Elgamal server test? Right. Uh, for the Elgamal server test, I, I, I think it depends on your, since uh, Elgamal has a super polynomial modulus. So in the packing, uh, we need some. We need a, a PRF to to detect to to generate a breakpoint in the group. As long as the group is large enough, we can we can pack as as much information as we want. Hmm. And so, this you do you think this can extend to uh, outing larger messages and bits? Or? You mean uh, the string OT or? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, what we solve is uh, what we, we focus on the bit OT it means uh, the message are just single bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, for if if you want to do for string OT, uh, you can you can do with easier easier techniques. I mean, bit OT implies string OT, right? Uh, but not the other way around. Ah, so you just you just repeat uh, over, right? Because you only have yeah, yeah, honest but yeah, curious yeah, yes. uh, security. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks. If there's no further questions, then let's thank the speaker again. Okay.